Tot is the contact. Tot is the contract. The contractual side of architecture <laughs> how did i even think of this i am so creative <sighs> i even remember asking my friends like should i go and ask if they did a mistake like mali rate yourself like you are that girl <laughs> okay yeah it's recording oh i look so damn fine <laughs> yes. hi everyone welcome back to my channel my name is mbali but for those who are new here you can call me mbali stm or to my favorites you can call me brazilians and i know i've been gone for a million years <laughs> uh life got busy i really got busy these things happen uh great news though i've been working and i'm proud to announce that i am one of the top 10 finalists for the nando's hot young designer competition and hopefully i'll be able to take you guys through the journey with me i'm so excited for the opportunities that i will be given uh for like the journey for the exposure so i'm really 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 excited about that and your house is done guys so i have been done with the renovation for almost a month now but i've been pretty hesitant about sharing it because it's not actually completed we decided to divide it into two phases i am going to drop the video this september so keep your notifications up and if you're new here we do everything lifestyle diy and design so i greet you all in the name of mbali the designer okay so it's been a pretty long journey getting here it hasn't been easy but i know that i'm meant to be here so i wouldn't necessarily say that i am deucing out of architecture but i am choosing to go on um more of like an interior architectural journey so yeah yeah so we are going to be taking a look at my undergraduate portfolio so this is my architectural undergraduate portfolio i have two portfolios one for architecture and one for interior architecture design and furniture so this is what i produced at the end of my three-year undergrad degree at vits apparently you have to always say that <laughs> I'm just going to speak about the modules that I found interesting apart from there are boring modules and you just have to stick through them right but this is all about the fun stuff so first year we had it was a module called structures and we were required to actually build structures pretty self-explanatory we had to build structures so um, I'm gonna talk about two two structures that really like were prominent in in my journey i would say the first one being the structure that we had to make out of paper and glue completely out of paper and glue there's no screws there is no hot glue and they just wanted is either cold glue or prit so they were very very strict about the type of materials we could use but then um the group that i was in we decided to make it was like a tower it wasn't it was maybe we can say 1.8 meters but one thing that architecture taught me is that you have to work in groups and you can't finish a project alone it's no man is an island and yeah um, i do have a picture of it from first year and the second the second prominence module that i really enjoyed and i would say launched my career as an interior architect or a designer of some sort actually you know what rate yourself girl as a designer hello <laughs> and that was um the elective that we had to choose in second year so there was the film elective furniture elective uh, photography and mapping elective so furniture ex furniture film and photography self-explanatory that's what we did most of my friends did film uh, Lufuna did film which shows in actually the content that she creates so you can go check out her Instagram page and follow my girl please and then uh, the mapping students were basically doing sort of like the urban designer side of architecture so I'd say if you'd want to have a career in 
urban development and planning probably choose mapping as a second elective if you are obviously adverts i don't know how other institutions um do those type of elective things so yeah without rambling too much i think i spoke too much let's just get right into it so this is written my undergrad portfolio and in some sort of way it's always stayed like this because it's not so different so this is my past one which is yellow and i wanted to draw the attention of my potential employer and it worked it worked <laughs> and uh the one that i have now from um postgrad is actually orange so it went from yellow to orange sorry my bad it's green now so yeah i keep it very simple and then you have a resume page so on my first page we have um so please excuse me because i'm looking down on my portfolio the, the paper one uh so on my first page we have a video that i did with um a good classmate of mine Gahiso, who's also an amazing amazing artist and he directed this video i just came with an idea and he just directed everything took the shots and everything and was perfect i've got the highest mark that i've ever gotten in my entire life and to a certain point i thought that maybe they did a mistake i even remember asking my friends like should i go and ask if they did a mistake They're like mali rate yourself like you are that girl <laughs> basically you have to talk about the change that you want to make in architecture and what you believe and what you stand for in the industry that you're working for so yeah I'd, I'd advise you to go watch the video i'm gonna link it down below to a page that i only use for school purposes and then we have the resume page which has a picture of me and one day one of my good friends told me that this picture is way too seducing to be in my portfolio i'm like uh tell me i should use a more professional picture i'm like comment down below if you agree with him i think it's nonsense i look amazing maybe he's right <laughs> so i changed it to my graduation photo so boohoo but black don't crack though <laughs> coming on to the first page we are going to be talking about traditional nostalgia and this is one of my beloved projects like i did say i took a furniture elective and this is the chair that i came about i really did not want to do things the hard way i did not want to do things on by myself because one thing i noticed is like there are hard workers and there are smart workers and i chose the smart path there was no way i could have welded this by myself there was no way i could have covered these um cushions by myself so i got people to do it for me basically had the drawing construct direct boom bang dad you know i don't know if i said this before but go places architecture just get someone to print it for you do it for you and then you sort it just as long as it's original and it's yours somebody else can do the hard work yeah but sometimes you have to do the hard work by yourself like these 200 drawings they took people out people were stressed so these are 200 thumbnail drawings that i had to do also in third year and we basically had to sketch 20 different buildings so uh, 10 being buildings that inspire us and then 10 being buildings that we did so we had to represent it in a very abstract way and it had like different categories like concepts sites geometry structures blah 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 i won't get too much into it all i know is that i was done me mbali the procrastinator was done way before time and i think i surprised myself and I really enjoyed it although my hands were painting but it's it's very nice when you look at them together not singly like ooh, if you look at them one by one you're like what is going on what is going on <laughs> i still have these sketches and i think i'm gonna keep them i always knew that i was gonna keep them so yeah and then on to the first project which was 
my final project for design and this is the project that got me my job this is the project that got me my first job forever be proud of that uh i'm i'm very amazed at that i was able to come up with this type of concept and if i tell you guys that this building was designed obviously you can see it but then if you don't know then you don't know but this part this building was designed in six hours it was designed in six freaking hours architects are magicians and that time i was at my lowest lowest point i knew construction i was not doing well and i think one of my one of my friends told me that i'm gonna fail and i cried my eyes out but then picked up my socks and decided to start a whole year's work within the last 24 hours of presenting the next day and i pulled it off like i usually do I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So it was on the sides of the market square. There's already uh, an existing library. So this building was a hybrid of a library and a theater um, and three th theaters um, underground. So um, by number one is where you enter. So you can either choose to go to number two, which is the amphitheater, which has a stage that is facing outside and that stage has a stage inside so you can open the curtains and it's going to be a shit sp uh, stage but then also there's another theater inside and in that theater there's another theater downstairs i'm like how did i even think of this i am so creative <sighs> so that is um that is my building which is jplc i named it jplc for johannesburg primary like primary <laughs> johannesburg public library center so yeah i pretty i enjoyed how everything came together because before that shambles and then we have another project called coco panong this was when i was starting to learn rivet and it actually does show because sweetie why are they wooden glasses over here why are the glasses made of wood Johnny? how yeah guys um i'm gonna talk about the layout uh i think my my strength my my design strength is actually planning out things but then i don't necessarily think about how they're gonna look in the end so I, I think this building turned out hideous outside but then in terms of like layout and how you can get from one point to another and how things are grouped perfect perfect master of concept but i can't present it ah and i sort of have this thing with like slopes so i'm going to show you just a long section throughout the building so number one would be the reception and then you go out there's a courtyard and then from the courtyard you get in the into the bar which is number three and then number four is the restaurant so as you're going you're sloping down and the site was at pretoria and as you can look at my ground floor everything was like laid out and it looks like a bird so one of my lectures were like you should have named this place after a bird it's like ooh, child i didn't even notice that but then kudos to me afterwards is a building that is just terrible guys i was learning how to use rivets and how to render i remember this is a second year project and this is when things were starting to click in terms of architecture because first year ah! down the drain down the drain first year we were all confused but second year was when things were starting to click and this is called the tetris building the tetris building meaning literally teaches the game and how the blocks intertwine so if you cut this building in elevation it will actually oh child not my portfolio falling apart oh man okay <laughs> it's as if it can sense that this is the last time <laughs> This is the last time I'm actually showing it to anyone but then as you, as you can see that my visual skills are I give it one out of ten 
But then the concept and the planning, baby, you know me. Um, so these are buildings that are next to each other, but then they actually interlock. Two buildings can be in the same vertical space, but then they never meet. My building could be here and my building could be here, but our buildings actually never meet. Like I, I can't get to your space and you can't get to my space, but then we're still part of the same vertical alignment. And yeah, I think I should give this project another go. Should I have time? I'm really thinking about trying to, um, I wouldn't say fix, but then I think it would be interesting to kind of tackle projects that I did in my undergrad with the knowledge that I have now. Cause I know for a fact, I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it. Not like this building killed me though. Soda Block, School of Digital Arts and Music. This is the building that tested our will. This is the building that uh, literally showed who stays and who goes. Okay, this was no child's play. Um, we had to start this building off in design, which was the given site was um, a site that is already on the school campus. We had to cater for students who are doing digital arts and uh, students who are doing music. We had to sort out parking the devil. I never knew that I would be working on parking for three whole months and still not get it right. Being an architect, ah! <laughs> it really tested my will and we had to take this into construction. So now it must be literal thinking, like you must add logic to it and know your sans code. So like, you can't just think of a design like I want a flying bu uh, building. Yes, you can pass that in design, but in construction, they were like, how? Jiny, Jiny, how can you make a flying building? So yeah, I uh, had to do the working drawings for this and dear Lord, Lord knows I almost fell behind. I almost fell behind. If it wasn't for, oh my God, I know I cried. I know I cried before having to do this, but then like it's it's one of the biggest lessons that i have ever gotten and i'm so grateful for friends who can keep it straight with you that like, girl you ain't gonna make it sorry <laughs> love ya but you ain't gonna make it so yeah uh that is the end of my portfolio i'm not gonna show you guys my group work or it was literally just to add just to add on oh finished i really hope you enjoyed the walkthrough through my first second and third year undergraduate um portfolio and if you're watching this out of interest of taking architecture i really hope it gave you some sort of insights to what we did at school we also do did like things like council drawings and we had like a module called small office practice which basically it tells us the contractual side of architecture and how contracts work, uh, how much you're supposed to bill your clients, taught us about um, the South African National Council of Architects. We, ha we had to take civil, which was something I never understood, like why? But now it all makes sense because you really have to apply logic to most of the things that you're doing. Understand you're an, you're an architect and your job is to design and everything. But if you can't go toe to toe with your contractors, then your design will never come through because one thing about contractors they will do what they want with or without you so guys that brings us to the end of my video i am back we're going to be doing this i have exciting concepts and exciting content coming up your way so make sure you tune in and become a part of my growing studio maze family i know one thing about my god about god he got my back and he don't play about me so tune in to see okay love y'all